I love carousel posts on Instagram and LinkedIn. And if you're trying to grow on either of those platforms, you should be posting carousels once in a while at least. But it's not as simple as taking your Instagram carousels and jumping over to LinkedIn and posting them. There's a few steps you need to take to make sure LinkedIn knows it's a carousel post and that it puts it in front of the right people. And so I stopped to record this really quick to give you a run through of exactly how to do that really quickly. Okay, so you can see here I have my carousel and it's currently formatted to the 1080 by 1350, that Instagram portrait dimensions favor. And it's going to be a carousel about LinkedIn carousels, right? Instagram and LinkedIn both love carousel style posts. The users and the platforms love carousel style posts. So you should be making them. And if you're making them on Instagram, you should be making them for LinkedIn. But maybe you've tried to post a carousel on LinkedIn and saw that it came up as a weird grid format and you're just like, this isn't working for me. Why is this not easy? And you gave up. I'm going to solve that problem. And you really should be doing this simple step and taking this over to LinkedIn because at least in my experience, I feel like LinkedIn's been so much better for me in terms of awareness. With Instagram, yes, if you like someone's post, Instagram might show you that person's content again in the future, even if you didn't follow them. But a lot of people use the Explore page on Instagram to discover new content and scroll mindlessly and find content that they enjoy. Now, with the Explore page, you only have the preview of the picture. But on LinkedIn, there are so many additional advantages in terms of creating awareness about you and your brand or whether you're running a personal page or a business page. And that is there isn't an image only explore page on LinkedIn. So when someone sees your content, they're seeing it within their newsfeed as they're scrolling. They'll see your post, but they'll always also see your profile picture, your name, and your subline. Now on LinkedIn, for most people, this means that they're seeing professional titles and taglines, which a lot of people use as USPs or unique seller propositions. Every time your content gets in front of somebody on LinkedIn, they see your face, your pitch, and your job title. And that's way different than just seeing a picture show up on a grid on an Instagram Explore page where maybe your brand colors and signature style are more important. But just think of how powerful that is. The other benefit of LinkedIn is that it's easier to bump into people again. So not only will people see your content again if they've previously liked it, which is similar to Instagram, but on LinkedIn, you get the additional benefit of having a sneak peek at who visited your profile. So if someone saw your content and went to look at your profile because they liked your content, but for whatever reason, they didn't send you a request or a connection or a follow, LinkedIn will let you know. And if you don't pay for LinkedIn premium, you'll still get to see a handful of people that view your profile as they're viewing it. So if you're active on LinkedIn, you can take advantage of this feature without having to sign up for a premium membership. But LinkedIn will tell you that so-and-so looked at your profile. This is their job description. This is their name. And now you can go and do some digital door knocking. And that doesn't mean you need to reach out and send them a message and be like, hello, please pay attention to me. It just means you can go and view their profile back, check out their content, maybe like a post that they recently posted or a comment on an article that they recently wrote or send them a, a connection request because they'll get those notifications back. And what I call digital door knocking is getting yourself out there, getting yourself known, checking in on people and getting seen by other people all online. And this has been an important strategy for several brands and businesses that I've helped grow that started with no audience, no mailing list, no awareness whatsoever to start building those first connections. So if you're a course creator or a coach or an aspiring influencer and you just want to grow or you're starting a new business and don't really have followers besides your friends and family yet, digital door knocking is something you should consider doing. It only takes 10 minutes a day to start really growing. And LinkedIn is one of the best places to do it. So if you want this little checklist, super simple, it'll keep you accountable. The link will be in the pinned comment. I don't need your email. This isn't a grab, but please like this video. And this is really the kicker, the next point here. I don't know what it is, and I've seen other people say it, so maybe it is confirmation bias. But when I do post a carousel on LinkedIn, that carousel seems to get engagement from people that are not first-degree connections, which means we aren't connected and they aren't even following my profile. And as soon as I see those names pop up on the carousel, within minutes, I'll see them liking older posts, other posts. And I don't have any notifications that these same names have visited my profile. So it's not that they're going and seeking out more content because they found it interesting, which is something we do all do, right? You see a post you like, you go to the profile and you want to consume more of the great content. But in these cases, and it seems to be consistent, the explanation here that I can come up with is LinkedIn's throwing more of my content on their timeline. So as soon as they scroll and their timeline refreshes after they've engaged with my carousel post, LinkedIn's showing them more content. And it's something that I've noticed 
happens way more consistently when the first post someone sees is a carousel format. And it's really great. There's, you know, a common principle in sales and marketing is that repetition is powerful. So for people to be seeing my name profile, for people to be seeing my name, my profile picture, my subline and content and content a few times in one swoop, the awareness is there. They're familiar with my face. And even if I don't win that connection or a follow right away, I can go out and digital door knock to earn it. Or they're going to remember me more and more when they see me in the future. But now we get to the downside, and it's really just a productivity issue. You can't just go and grab your Instagram carousel posts and drop them on LinkedIn. So if I were to take this Instagram portrait style Canva project and export it right now and go and upload it to LinkedIn, it's going to format it as a grid. So what you really actually want to do is make sure we resize them. And Canva makes it so easy because they already have the dimensions. I will say that this is not the only dimension. There's actually something more important that tells LinkedIn that your post is going to be a carousel post, which we'll cover on the next slide. But this is the recommended LinkedIn carousel dimensions. It allows for better display on mobile. And unlike Instagram, where you see that one square and have to kind of figure out it's a carousel. And usually us as creators, we want to add things like arrows or tell people to swipe. But with LinkedIn, users can actually see the second slide already and they want to know what it is. So they're going to keep scrolling, right? I think that's part of the reason why LinkedIn carousels seem to be so grasping. So we're going to resize this and you can see it's a little bit, it's a little bit taller. And again, I said that that wasn't the most important thing to do because you can kind of have some, you can kind of get away with some things with the dimensions. It's not exactly the dimensions that are the only problem with getting LinkedIn to realize you're posting a carousel and not just a bunch of pictures that they should show as a grid. What you really need to do is export as a PDF. So before you do that, you want to make sure everything's complete and everything's in the right order. And by the way, guys, just as a general tip, even if you're only posting something to Instagram, with Canva, it's really easy. If you give each page its own title, that handles the, the naming. You don't have to go and change all these file names after you download them. But yes, we're going to export this as a PDF. And I know that seems so weird. Because we are exporting it as a PDF, we're going to actually be uploading it as a document to LinkedIn. And LinkedIn's going to automatically turn it into slides for a carousel post for us. But it's going to do that in the order that our PDF is in. So you always want to make sure everything's in the correct order. You don't have any additional slides hanging around that shouldn't be there because you won't be able to remove them. So just be aware that when you use the PDF format to export and then upload to LinkedIn as a document, there are some interface and user functionality things to be aware of. And one more thing, not only is uploading this PDF as a document going to make LinkedIn understand that this is a carousel style post, but the other benefit there to you and not just how LinkedIn recognizes the posts is that you can actually share more than 10 slides when you use a proper PDF upload as a document to create a LinkedIn carousel. So I'm actually going to create a little... And then we'll go and export. So I always choose PDF standard, haven't noticed any quality issues. And then when we go to LinkedIn, we're gonna act like we're creating a post and we're gonna find this, add a document. I'm gonna upload that PDF we just downloaded. You notice it's got all 11 pages. I'll do a descriptive title. And then we post, and I'll also go and take my Instagram portrait dimensions and get it posted over to Instagram. But just as an example, you see, look how the timeline looks. I see when Rebecca interacts with something. I see Andrew Holland, who's a second connection. I'm not connected with him, and I'm not following him. I see his pitch and title here, his picture. Same thing. I can get all this information scrolling the feed without having to visit someone's profile. And meanwhile, if someone comes to your profile, it can be a little bit difficult to actually go and find someone's posts. These are pinned posts. These are things that I've purposely pinned and featured. But someone actually has to come down here to your activity section to start seeing things. And it'll group all of your activity together. So with LinkedIn, it's not quite the same as being able to go and click through someone's feed and just jump in and consume more content. If people are clicking through to your page, they're most likely looking to learn more about who you are and not just silently consume more of your content. But there's my carousel and you see how it knows that it's a carousel. You have my title here. It gives you how many pages this is going to be. You can navigate by slides using the scroller. Or you can use these. And there you have it. So that's all, you guys. And even though I see people share the tip often that a LinkedIn carousel recommended dimensions is 
the 1200 by 1500 pixels. I really never see people point out that you should be exporting as a PDF and then uploading it as a document when you create the post on LinkedIn. That's the key step here to make this happen. And again, I think it's that distinction that makes this post type stand out so differently to LinkedIn on the back end. And that's why it pushes its its discoverability in a different way. So give it a try, especially if you're already making Instagram carousels. It only takes a few clicks to repurpose it quickly. And there's a whole new world of opportunity for you to go out there and start knocking some doors, start meeting new people. LinkedIn's a great and growing platform to do it. But that's all. If you found this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're following me somewhere but not following me on LinkedIn, let's get connected over there. You will see content from me over there that you might not see me post as a video or as an Instagram post. And I think it's one of the most fun platforms to interact with people rather than just consume content that someone posts. All you got to do is look up Kat Wagner, but you'll also see links to my socials in the description in the pinned comment. If you're not already subscribed here on YouTube, I love to cover news and tips about digital marketing, everything from SEO to social media marketing to tools, tips, tricks, and tech trends, and how they relate to how a small business owner or a marketer can be more successful every day. So I hope this is the day that I earn your subscription. And until next time, happy brand hacking.